Hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at unit 9.4, which is on something called thermodynamic and kinetic control. So let's get started. So if you will recall, we looked at this exact reaction right at the end of my last lesson to illustrate two things. One, that you can do a Hess's Law problem with Gibbs free energy values, but also to illustrate the point that just because a reaction is thermodynamically favored, and I know that this one is because it has a de negative delta G value, just because something is favored does not necessarily mean it has a fast reaction rate. So just because something is favored does not mean it's going to readily occur. It could be something like this reaction where diamond changes into its graphite form. It's going to happen at a very, very slow rate. And the term that we use when this occurs, when you have something that is favored but is very, very slow or almost appears to not occur at all, we say that it is under kinetic control. And if you will remember back to unit five, the kinetics unit, reactions that are very slow are often slow because they have a high activation energy. So let's review for a second. Remember, activation energy is the height on the y-axis, the potential energy from your original reactants up to the top where we find what's called the activated complex. So if that activation energy requirement is very high, that typically is going to result in a slow reaction rate. Okay, now let's also recall what are some things we can do to speed up a reaction. And one of the things that we talked about a lot in Unit 5 was the addition of a catalyst. If you will recall, all a catalyst does is lower the activation energy. Please notice that when a catalyst is added, the overall change in energy between the reactants and the products, which is delta H, even with a catalyst, that is not affected. And guys, that means that when a catalyst is added, that isn't going to affect the thermodynamics. It's not gonna change delta H or delta S, which means it's also not gonna change delta G. Adding a catalyst does not make a reaction more favorable. It's not gonna change the delta G value at all. Okay, all it's going to do is make it go faster. So keep in mind, favorability and speed of reaction are not, they're not connected. So what I want you to do is to pause your video and try and answer these free response questions. It's going to bring a lot of topics together that we have discussed in previous units, but I want you to pause the video and see how you do with this. All right, let's check your answers. So we were given a reaction and we are told right away that it is thermodynamically favorable. And we're also given the delta H value, which I can see is negative. This is an exothermic reaction. And part one says, for this reaction, indicate whether the standard entropy change, delta S is positive, negative, or zero, justify your answer. Remember guys, you always want to answer that by looking at the reaction and talking about states of matter. So what did I say? I said that the delta S is going to be negative and I talked about states of matter. What's happening in this reaction? Three moles of gaseous reactants are being converted to two moles of a liquid slash solid. Okay, remember guys, gases have a very high amount of entropy, so I can clearly see entropy is decreasing here. Delta S 
is negative. Part two says which factor, the change in enthalpy, dental, delta H, or delta S, which one provides the principal driving force for this reaction? Explain. Go back to the beginning of the problem. We know this reaction is favored. And so this question is asking us, is it the delta H or the delta S that's really driving this? Go back to that chart that we saw in unit 9.3. A negative delta H exothermic, that is typically going to support favorability. Whereas a negative delta S, like we said in part one, is typically not going to favor a thermodynamically favored process. So I, what did I say? I said delta H is driving this reaction. Exothermic reactions are typically favored while a decreasing entropy, which is what we indicated in part one, does not support favorability. Okay. Third part for the reaction, how is the value delta G affected by an increase in temperature. Go back to that plus minus chart we saw in unit 9.3. When you have a negative delta H and a negative delta S, what did it say in the chart? It said favored at low temps. So what's going to happen if we increase the temperature? An increase in temperature is going to cause delta G to also increase, which is, if you think about it, guys, that's meaning that the reaction is going to become less and less favored. Using that equation that we used a lot last unit, in the last subunit, with a negative delta S and a negative delta H, mathematically, if T goes up, that's going to cause delta G to also go up. Okay, you can always use math to explain your answers. All right, part B. Some reactions that are predicted based on their sign for delta G to be thermodynamically favored at room temperature do not proceed at a measurable rate at room temperature. And it says account for this apparent contradiction. And guys, that example I gave you right at the beginning of diamonds morphing into car uh, carbon graphite was exact example of that situation. So reaction rate, the speed, is determined by activation energy. If the activation energy is relatively large, a reaction that is thermodynamically favored may have a very slow reaction rate. And that's what we saw with that diamond to graphite situation. All right, last part. Part two says a suitable catalyst increases the rate of such a reaction. True. What effect does the catalyst have on the delta G of the reaction? Explain. Remember what a catalyst does, ladies and gentlemen. A catalyst is not going to have any effect on delta G. All a catalyst does is reduce the activation energy, which thus increases the rate of reaction but it has no effect on the values of delta H or delta S, so it cannot affect delta G or the thermodynamics of these reactions. So the whole point of this subunit was really just to emphasize the point that just because something is favored does not necessarily translate to a fast rate. We can definitely see reactions that are favored but are very, very slow. We say that they are under kinetic control. So I hope you have learned a little something today and I look forward to seeing you next time.